Will somebody praise the Lord in this house this morning? Come on, let's stand our feet. Amen. Somebody shout Jesus in this house. Amen. How, oh, that was weak. Come on now. How about Jesus in this house? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, Roll Tide. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good to see everybody in the house of God this morning. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. Will you turn around somebody and say, it's good to see you in the house of God this morning. I'm glad you're here. You look beautiful this morning. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the house of God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We are here this morning for a very special reason. Number one, to worship the Lord. Amen. Number one, to worship the Lord. Number two is to celebrate our pastors today. And I want to thank God. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead and give them a clap and a shout. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want Pastor Justin and Pastor Morgan to stand if they would. And uh, if you would, stand. Amen. Justin's like, what do I do? I'm just telling you to stand. And amen. Praise the Lord. And I'm so glad they're here this morning. And I'm glad that we have good shepherds. Amen. I'm glad that we have people that we love and that we appreciate this morning. And uh, thank God for what he's doing in the house this morning. Amen. We got a little buzz. It's okay. Don't freak out. You may be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's Colton's mic. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated, Sister Morgan. Amen. Amen. We got a couple announcements this morning. Number one, it's Pastor Appreciation Day, so we're thankful for that. And uh, I want to thank all the people that joined us yesterday. Who went with us to Impact yesterday? Raise your hand. Amen. Amen. I thank God for the, Yeah, go ahead. I thank God for you this morning. Uh, our team split up. We touched. We saw 15 people face-to-face, -face, witness to over 25, and uh, put out flyers off there. Rossville, thanks to Sister Christy and Brother Shane, and uh, we saw a lot of good responses yesterday, so we'll have some people here Saturday. So that'll segue into our next announcement. Next Saturday, this coming Saturday, is our fall festival, amen? It begins at 1, and it should end around 4, and it'll be our chili cook-off, and I've said it, and I'll say it again, Sister Morgan is bound determined to win that chili cook-off. So we've got to have somebody come in and show her up, and uh, you're going to decorate your cards as Bible stories, and there's a sign-up sheet in the back. Uh, for a couple of different things, if you want to put your name on those and read those and uh, sign up for the chili cook-off and do that, please do let us know uh, if you're going to be there. Also, it's awesome to have my brother in Christ, Brother Gary Keelan, this morning. Amen. Minister of the gospel. Amen. Good to have you, my friend. That's my buddy right there. Praise the Lord. Good to have him. I'm looking forward to a good word from God today. Amen. I know we've been in Ruach all week long, and I am fired up, ready to shout. I could run through a wall right now. And I thank God he's still moving in the last days. I thank God his spirit, Brother Frank, is still with us this morning. And I love him and I praise him. Amen. Let's all stand again, begin to give our tithes and offerings at this moment. And uh, we're going to go right into worship. I want you to just close your eyes real quick. And I want you just to pray. And you seek God for what you want to give this morning. Amen. I know it's, you're supposed to give your tithes and offerings. And uh, if you sow sparingly, the pastor says you'll reap sparingly. Amen. Uh, so we're going to pray this morning and uh, just honor the Lord with our prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you, God. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in this house this morning. Father, I pray you meet every need, Lord, financially, spiritually, physically. God, I thank God you're a God of the right now. And you're a God that hears our prayer and knows our cry. And I pray, God, you can meet with us one more time this morning, God. I pray, God, your spirit will be with us, Lord. And all we say and do, God, I pray that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And I give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. And we give it all to you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Can you give him a clap and a shout of praise this morning? <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. You ready to worship this morning? Oh, you ready to worship this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go a little old school this morning, all right? Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Well, my heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. No pain, no death can enter there. I feel like traveling on. Oh yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like 
so good to me. I feel like traveling on until that blessing all I see. I feel like traveling on. Oh, yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. I like this other old song this morning. Well, there's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond, where the saved of earth shall see this glory share. Where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore. Everybody will be happy over there. I'm lost a lot of little streams, but when I see old Jordan, Jordan, 
in the house. I said I feel the Holy Ghost in the house. Woo. Mm. I mean, can testify to this. Well, there's been a lot of people talk about me since I walked this narrow way. That's just another little valley, but I came through it when I prayed. I climbed a lot of high mountains. I've shed a million tears. But when I see my Jesus on the other side, then I'll have no fear. Then I'll have no fear. Say, I got a wonderful river to cross. One more mountain to climb. I got one more battle. I got one more battle with the devil. And I know he'll understand that I'm a boy who with Jesus. Gotta look at me. Hold it to his best car hand. Oh, hold it to his Hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's have a shout of praise to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. said, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overtake you. I'm so glad I serve a lifter upper of my head this morning. That whenever my head is down and my back's up against the wall, all I got to do is say one name. One name that still holds power. One name that still brings deliverance. And that name is Jesus today. Can you shout Jesus in the house? Ask me how it is that I'm still standing. 
standing Can you wonder how I made it through the storm I can't boast of any special powers hey. There's no secret I just held on All you know to do is just hold on to Jesus. Oh, I can tell that things are finally happening. Hey, see, I've got blessings I can call my own. Listen, there were times when I wondered if I was going to make it. But while I was wondering, I just kept holding on, and I held on till the song was over. Oh, hallelujah! I don't claim to be a hero, and I don't have all the answers, but I held on till the song was over. Not because I'm good, not because I'm great. The storm was over. I don't claim to be a hero, and I don't have all the answers, but I just held on oh, till my storm was over. Not because I'm good, not because I'm great, not because I'm strong, but I held. of praise right there. We can just live on it this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for holding on to us, God. When we couldn't even hold ourselves. Hallelujah. Through it all. Through it all. My God. I've learned. Let's just flow. To trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in my God through it all Woo! through it all I've learned to depend upon his word let's sing that chorus just like that come on man Trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon my favorite verse. Listen, man. So I thank God for the mountains, I thank Him for every valley, I thank Him for every storm. I feel the 
Day, but how many knows the Bible says that this is the day that the Lord has made, that I will be glad in thee and rejoice. I know that today we've gathered, and I'm thankful for it, but above all, every day we can gather to honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I wish somebody would give the Lord a hand clap of praise all in this house. Oh, come on, somebody. If he's been good to you, I wish somebody lift up your voice and begin to praise him in this house. Come on, somebody, I wish you'd begin to praise him through your mouth. I know every valley, every mountain, but God, you've been good. I wish somebody say, but God, you've been good to me this way. Oh. Now, the Bible begins to tell us why we were beginning to sit there, and I wasn't going to say nothing, but I kept feeling it in my spirit that when Paul begins to talk to the church of Philippi, he begins to talk to him in an account that says, and again I say rejoice, yeah. and again I say rejoice in the Lord. And see, it didn't just stop there. Paul began to talk about a mindset. See, oftentimes the enemy doesn't necessarily come in with the hooks and all the horns, but he can get right here in your mind. See, Ain't it sometimes you can be in the presence, begin to elevate your hands only to be still bound in a prison in your mind that you're going through all the things. But Paul begins to say, and again, I say rejoice and rejoice in the Lord. But he said there's got to be an extra step that goes after that. He said you got to stop looking behind at everything that tells you down. You got to stop looking what they said about you. You got to stop looking at all your failure. You got to stop looking at all the things that bound you. And then he said you got to start looking. I wish somebody say I'm about to start looking. I know that song he said through it all I learned to trust in him. See through it all I learned not to look back at yesterday but I'm going to keep on pressing because he's been good. I wish somebody with hair lifted devil and begin to push in to what God has for you I wish somebody shake every bond and every mindset I wish somebody lift up your voice and say through it all in this
if you lift one more shout of praise. I don't hear you this morning. If you lift one more shout of praise. He's holy. He's worthy. He's righteous this morning. And I love him and I love him and I love him. Do you love him? Say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I, you be seated for a moment. I just want to tell you one thing and I'm going to introduce the man of God this morning. Uh, there's so many times I can tell in myself I put limitations on God. I've preached one time and Katie can back me up. We use God like a Taco Bell box. You know them $5 boxes from Taco Bell? Eat half of it now, eat the other half later. A lot of us don't want to take the fullness of God because we're scared of the judgment of God. But look, I'm telling you, God is not just a God that judges. He's a God of righteousness. And he can right every wrong in your life if you let him. I just feel like saying some, to somebody this morning because many times, Sister Kapanga, I only give God half of my sacrifice, half of my life. I don't give him all. There's sometimes I barely give him anything. Come on, somebody. But it's in the moments that I know God was there yesterday when I needed somebody to lean on. Hallelujah. He'll be here today when I find myself weak in a circumstance. And I'm glad he's a God of not just yesterday or today, but he's a God of the future that knows everything that you're going through and is able to help you. If you love him, give him one more shout and clap of praise. I love him this morning. I love him. Amen. I get the honor, the privilege, the due diligence. The pastor said, what do I do? I said, you don't do nothing. You just sit there. Amen. But he had to speak his mouth, didn't he? Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Ain't that just like an OMB? Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord, little Justin. Amen. Good to have the family of the pastor in the back. Come on, somebody. Good to have all of y'all. We love you. Appreciate you. I shook Justin Daddy's hand. My arm about fell off. He's a big old guy. Praise the Lord. I guess that shoulder feels better. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good. We love you. I love you so much. Met him at the funeral home, and he just had the biggest smile on his face. And I thank God for somebody that don't forget to smile. You may be going through hell all week, but don't lose your smile. Don't lose your joy. I don't care if we Baptist, Catholic, Presbyterian, Church of God, Apostolic, just have a smile on your face. Amen? I better shut up. Let the preacher preach. Good to have my buddy, my pal from Redemption to the Nations, Brother Gary Keelan, with us this morning. Good to have him in the house. Now look. Hide your purses, hide you anything you don't want broken, hide it right now. I've heard stories from my brother Philip. He kicked through a wall last time he was in the meeting. So if, we, if these walls are good, I believe they are. Amen. <laughs> but look, I love this man of God. I've met him a couple other times. We was in the revival together. Love his spirit. He's the same on stage as he is off the stage. You don't find men of God like that no more. Me and Katie was at dinner last night. We was talking about having an arm wrestle match with him today. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he might win. <laughs> I wore my buff shirt just to make him make myself look big. But, you know, amen. I want you to give your urgent attention to the man of God this morning. Everything you have, you got to go to the bathroom, go now. I'm old school. Just go now. Attend to the word of God this morning. Amen. So without further ado, would you stand? Help me welcome Brother Gary Keelan to the stage. Amen. God bless you. All right, if that, was, if that applause was for me, I'm telling you, it's way too much. But if it was for Jesus, what wasn't near enough. Can we just magnify Jesus loud and proud? The Bible says cry loud and don't hold back. Lift up your voices like a trumpet. Oh, clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto God with a voice, with a voice of triumph. Lord, you've given us the victory. We give you praise for it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Together let us exalt his name. The Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. How many of you know it to be true? Amen. I'll tell you what, as they were playing and singing, you know, Pastor leaned over and said, just whenever you're ready to get up there, you know, you just got the freedom and the liberty. And I thought, man, I, I want to hear some more of this. You know, somebody said, well, where's the devil at? Well, I don't know. I'm not hunting for the devil. I'm not looking for him. Besides, he's probably up in Washington right now trying to run the country. That's probably where he's at. <laughs> and, uh, 
You know, I don't want to dance with the donkeys or eat with the elephants. I want to jam for the lamb. Amen. I'm a kingdom man, and there's only one king, and the kingdoms of the earth will be, become the kingdoms of our God. How many of you know it to be true? And God's kingdom trumps every other kingdom because we got a king that has dominion over the whole earth. How many of you know it to be true? So uh, as I was thinking about it while they were praying and worshiping, uh, the, I mean, this is my favorite style. I'll tell you that right now. Get on down to town, devil chasing, sin killing, red hot, Holy Ghost, wide eyed, sanctified, blood bought, spirit taught, Bible toting, scripture quoting, Satan bashing, sin trashing, hard praying, truth conveying, pride swallowing, Christ following, faith walking, tongue talking, sheetrock busting, God trusting, Holy Ghost, devil chasing, sin killing, praise and worship. Amen. Some people lead praise and worship like they're at a funeral. This is not a funeral. I mean, we're here to celebrate the resurrection life of Jesus Christ. And man, if we all die, how many of you know to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord? We win now, we win then too. And if we don't die, how many of you know he's coming back? And he's going to split that eastern sky. They don't preach it anymore. It don't still don't make it not true. How many of you know it's true? Whether nobody preaches it or not, Amen. Me preaching it don't make it's true. It's true, and I ought to preach it because it is true. Somebody say amen. So as they were praying, uh, playing, I thought, man, I don't know where the devil is necessarily, but I guarantee you he's probably in the phone booth right now dialing 911. They gave him an et cetera and p.m. headache. And so did you. When you, I, I think about it like this in the spiritual realm that we can't see. See, when you praise and worship God like that, you're literally taking a demon in this hand, a demon in that hand, and you're popping their heads together, and you stack them up out in a, out, outside, out in a stack right there because there's no way when we praise and worship God like that that he can even come in here. He can't handle it, amen. He wanted all the praise. Isaiah 14 said he made five eye statements and he fell from heaven because of it. I will exalt myself above the throne of God. I will ascend into the heights. I will ascend into the heavens, amen. He was so egocentric, so narcissistic, amen. He wanted all the praise and glory. He was around the throne. He was a beautiful cherub. He had instruments built within himself, but he wanted the glory. But when we give Jesus the glory, I'm telling you right now, he just can't handle it, amen. He packs his bags and leaves town. So I honor uh, this praise and worship team, and you're fortunate. I tell you that right now. He knows what I'm talking about, Pastor Hunter. There, has been an evangelist, and and I mean, I, I'm, I'm jealous. I'm jealous because they can, he can play and sing and preach. <laughs> I'm just a one trick pony, okay. <laughs> So if he ever, he won't run out of anything to preach or say, but if he does, you know, how many of you know he can just pick up with a song? <laughs> My brother-in-law's like that as well. Kevin Wallace, same thing. You know, he can, he can play the drums, sing, you know, just pick up. I'm, I'm kind of jealous, so I need to repent right off the bat. But uh, this is Pastor's Appreciation Sunday. And I'm telling you, when I got the email from, from, from Lady Owenby there, Sister Morgan, I'm telling you, my spirit leaped. I'm, I'm like, Lord, this is what I love. I, more than anything, I love honoring pastors. As an evangelist, part of my role is to assist pastors in helping their churches obey the Great Commission. How many of you know a great commitment to the Great Commandment and the Great Commission will grow a great Christian in a great church? Amen. That's my role is to win the lost and then train and equip the saints to do the same and help pastors. We're going to win the lost. Somebody said, well, how are we going to win the lost? By hook or by crook? By the shepherd's crook and by the evangelist hook together, we're going to win the lost. So uh, my spirit leaped in me. And so this morning, I want to take just a few moments here to honor your pastor. You know, the Bible says, give honor, the elders that rule well, be counted worthy of double honor, especially those that labor in the word and in doctrine. So pastor, this morning, I give you double honor and your, and your wife there, Sister Morgan. <clears throat> and, and thank you for allowing me to minister in the pulpit. Now, I didn't come here today to have you serve me. I come to serve you, okay, not come to serve your pastor. So 
just real quick, I, I want to honor the pastor by showing you from the scriptures how important it is that what you're doing today brings honor to God because ministry is God's hand extended. It's, it's the method whereby God chooses to give you and your family what you need. Now, a lot of people mistreat pastors. And I know so many pastors, I can't even, I mean, literally hundreds down through the years. And, and I'm telling you right now, most churches mistreat their pastors and don't respect. And when you do that, you, you know, I'm, a, I'm country, I'm old school, I'm a hillbilly, okay? You can tell by my accent. <laughs> Somebody said, well, them hillbillies are not educated. I said, yeah, we get educated, we just don't let it go to our heads. I mean, <laughs> But my grandpa used to have a bunch of hunting dogs. Anybody have any hunting dogs? And I'd watch him go out and feed those dogs, and he would actually put food down for them jokers. And they would literally bristle up. And he'd put the food down, and they would snap at his hand. And I thought, that's my grandpa's feeding you jokers and putting you all up and building all kind of... Uh, shelter for you and you have the audacity to snap at the hand that's feeding you <laughs> so I want, I want to this is pastor's appreciation and uh, I want to show you how important it is to 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 honor the pastor because it's like the pastor is is God's hand extended to you to help you get what you and your family needs okay so I don't want to be that church member that snaps at the, the hand that's feeding me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, so I give honor to you, Pastor. So I want you to see this, and I use this example. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 4, and it says, uh, I, I will endeavor to keep Ephesians uh, 4 and verse 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all is above all, through all, and in you all. Unto everyone he gives a grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Then he goes on to say uh, that Jesus descended into the lower parts of the earth. He led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. Okay. So in the context he talks about distributing grace according to the measure of Christ. Then he talks about he gave gifts to me and you. Okay. Then it goes on and defines the gifts that he gives. He gave the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the... You can be seated if you want to. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ until we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Jesus Christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, the cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love that we may grow up into him in all things. I know I set a mouthful there. Quoted almost Ephesians 4 down through verse 16. But here's what I want you to see. He gives the apostle, okay? I use the hand example. The apostle to govern, the prophet to guide. The prophet will point his finger and bring correction to the church. So, <laughs> I'm not a prophet nor a son of a prophet, as the, thing, as the Bible says. But, you know, be careful, okay, because if I point my finger at you, i got three pointing back at me. And when a prophet prophesies, the, he, he can't operate alone. He has to consult the other prophets, okay, and it has to be judged. If I throw out a, a prophecy, I ought to gather up all the other prophets in this church and and let's get together and see if what I've said is, is first biblical and godly and from God, okay? Uh, prophecies need to be judged, okay? And we, we do that together. The other prophets judge the prophecy, see if, see if it's true. And don't just swallow stuff hook, line, and sinker. That ever, just because somebody stands up and says, I'm a prophet, because there's, how many of you have ever heard somebody prophet lie? Some people are prophetic, but some people are pathetic. I mean, <laughs> I'd rather be prophetic in the wilderness than pathetic in the temple. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So, so uh, you know, uh, prophets are, the real ones are humble. We got too much pride on parade, too many Pentecostal peacocks, 
Okay, where's the humility at? See, I must decrease so that he can increase. I don't want more of an increase of me. I want to be a walking, living, breathing dead man. All I want you to see through me is Jesus. Period. Case closed. Roger over and out. But a prophet will point and bring correction to the church. Some people can't handle correction. Okay? So the apostle governs, the prophet guides, and the, the evangelist, that's the, the middle finger, okay? And the, it, it's the long finger on the hand because the, the evangelist is reaching out, bringing in the harvest, and keeping the eyes of the body of Christ on the harvest. If we're not careful, we get narcissistic and egocentric, and it's all about what's going on in these four walls. How many of you know there's a lost and dying world that needs this church? You've been planted down here in Rossville, Georgia, to be light that can be seen, salt that can be tasted. So the evangelist gathers, trains, and equips the saints to do the same, to be able to win people to Jesus Christ. I know people full of the Holy Ghost that had never witnessed uh, to anybody personally, one-on-one, -on -one, outside of a Sunday morning meeting. Amen. I don't know if you really got filled with the Holy Ghost because Acts chapter 1, verse 8, not the Holy Ghost, not the way they got filled with the Holy Ghost because my Bible said you shall receive power when God's Spirit has come upon you and then notice the result of it. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the earth. In other words, when you really get full of the Spirit, you get will get propelled out into the harvest field. So my role is to say to you, the fields are white unto harvest and pray you the Lord of the harvest send forth the labors into the harvest field and to compel you to go out there and help you uh, operate in the great commission that's the role of the evangelist which is you know people have tried to get me to pastor churches down I hate to tell you I'm not going to tell you how old I am <laughs> but it's decades they've tried to get me to pastor various churches and different denominations and and I'm and you know there's people have asked me when you when you're going to pastor I may never pastor okay I'm called to the office of the evangelist to spread the good news of the gospel, and that's all over the world. But here's where I want to settle right here to honor your pastor. That's the ring finger, that finger right there, married to the church. Your pastor is passionate about you, and believe me, I know from talking to pastors, if you're not sitting on that, you, you think, well, they don't miss me when I'm here. I'm telling you right now, pastors that are called like him, they absolutely, I mean, it tears your, their hearts. If you've got a pastor's heart, it tears. They're just wondering where you're at. I mean, I talk to pastors all, and you might think, I mean, it doesn't matter how big the church it is. I mean, you get up to a 1,000. I've heard pastors pastoring a 1,000, and they could tell me literally, well, such and so wasn't here. That family's on vacation, such and so. I'm like, how do you remember all this? They can tell you who's not there because you're part of the body of Christ. And it's like this. If, if my hand's cut off, how I many you know I'll know I know my hand's gone? Because <laughs> you're, you're connected to the body. And if a part of my body's missing, believe me, I know it's missing. I got pain telling me you don't have a finger now. <laughs> and and that's, that's how important this is, okay? And so your pastor there will guard you. And I heard Pastor Justin was a three-time Georgia State wrestling champ. Can we thank God? I love athletes. So you're talking about somebody going to guard you? I double-dog there. I know you may have some security here, but that's all you need is that pastor right there. If somebody comes in here, there's going to be a chokehold or a stranglehold. I've got respect. i got a lot of friends that wrestled in college. I was on the power team, and a lot of them, I, I had a guy that was an All-American at Oklahoma State, a six-foot-five weight. He was a super heavyweight a wrestler. And one, one of the other guys on the team looked at me, and he said, I think I could take old Leonce over there. And I said, man, I wouldn't do it. Oh, believe me. <laughs> and he was big, too. I was like, I, I promise you, don't do it, dog. Don't do it. No, oh, I, I think I – and they got the horse playing, and it wasn't – I mean, Leonce had him tied up in some kind of clothesline and had him laid out on the floor. I said, I told you, I tried to tell you. <laughs> so your pastor there, <laughs> I honor him and got a lot of respect for somebody that knows how to. You, you got to be disciplined to be a wrestler. And to win three state championships, that's big. That's big. So your pastor, I'm sure, if he's that diligent with something like that, something so important as the word of God, I give him double honor. And uh, can we just thank God for the pastor? Stand on your feet and let's appreciate what God has given you here in, in Pastor Justin and Morgan Owenby. Thank you, sir, for allowing me. Thank you. Thank you. You, you may be seated.
Hallelujah. All right, let's get busy in a word. You ready to get busy? Amen. Uh, turn to, uh, let's see, Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 4. You're familiar with this passage, or you should be, but you may not be familiar with the importance of this, past, this passage as it concerns the kingdom of God and as it concerns other parables, okay? Now, there's two path types of scripture that's very difficult to preach from. One is one nobody's familiar with because you got to get everybody up to speed and you got to set a context and it takes you a while to get people there. But the other one that is difficult to preach from is the text that everybody's familiar with. You've learned it in Sunday school because what you'll do if you're not careful, you'll say, I know all there is to know about that passage of Scripture. Don't do yourself that kind of disservice. I've looked at passages of Scripture for literally years and then all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost re reveals something to me. I'm like, how could I have missed that so many years, Lord? And, and he said, you just wasn't tuned in. I would have shown you, you know, but you just assumed you knew everything there is to know about what I've said. Because the Bible is like a multifaceted diamond. As it turns, it shines a different sort of light on certain passages. So this one right here you're probably familiar with, so don't check out on me, okay? Because we're going to get somewhere, and we're try to, I'm going to try to get somewhere quick. Because I know this is Pastor's Appreciation. We've got some other things that we want to do here. But let's look at this, and I'm just going to read the, where he explains what it is. Go to Mark chapter 4. Let's, let's start at verse 10. But when he was alone, those around him with the 12 asked him about the parable. And he said to them, to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to those who are outside, all things in parable, all things come in parables, so that seeing they may not see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. <clears throat> in verse 13, and he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? Here's the importance of this parable. This is basically saying if you understand this parable, you can understand how his kingdom operates. And if you understand this parable, you will also understand that this is the key to unlocking the other parables that he told. This one here is the parable you need to understand here. And he, and he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all parables? The sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. How many of you know we got an adversary? We have an adversary to God's word getting planted in our hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who, when they hear the word, immediately, re immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves, so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. How many of you know we got adversity? We got an adversary. And how many of you know this is not a bed of roses? We're in a sin-cursed world. There's going to be adversity come your way. Now, these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of the world the deceitfulness of riches and the des desires for other things entering in choke the word. Worry, wealth, and worldliness will choke God's word out. If you're apathetic, okay, how many of you know sometimes apathy can sit in on you? We got an adversary. We got adversity. We got apathy here can set in. Worry, wealth, and worldliness can certainly choke out the word and you become unfruitful. But I believe I'm in a house. Hallelujah. That the atmosphere, I know it. They supercharge the atmosphere with worship because he inhabits the praises of his people. The anointing removes burdens and destroys yokes. So here's the other thing I want you to see. The atmosphere is critical for the seed germinating. How I many of you know if we create the right atmosphere, the word that he's preaching week in and week out, and he's also teaching and preaching as well in this house. How I many of you know you'll bring you and your family are going to bring forth a harvest? Not 30, not 60, but a hundredfold increase to those that will would hear it 
and receive it. How many of you receive the word ahead of time right now? Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, stretch forth your hand to heal that signs, wonders, and miracles be done in the name of your holy child, Jesus. And when we pray, shake this place where we are assembled. And Lord, may they all go out of this place speaking the, your word with boldness. And God, I pray they'll be fruitful, multiply, subdue, replenish, and have dominion. God, allow me to speak your word with truth, but let me do it with a right attitude of humility and submission. I am submitted to your lordship this morning. I cannot operate in and of myself. I am not operating independently of you, but I'm totally dependent upon you. For without you, I can do nothing, but through you, I can do all things through your son, Jesus, who gives me the strength. As the word goes forth, I pray the seed will not just go on them, but go in them so deep. And as they mix it with faith, God, I thank you for the harvest that's coming their way, spiritually, mentally, physically, socially, and financially. Good measure, pressed down and shaken again and running over their families and their extended families are going to benefit and be fruitful. I thank you, Lord, that it's coming their way. Lord, it's in the five realms of our humanity. God, they're blessed and highly favored in this house. And God, they're going to be doers of your word, not just hearers only. We're not going to be deceived. We're going to do what you've commanded us to do. And God, you'll back up your word with signs, wonders, and miracles following. And you went with them and confirmed your word with signs, wonders, and miracles following. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this is a powerful passage of Scripture. Have you thought about how many messages you've heard? Have you thought about how many different teachings that we've heard? I mean, we've got access to all kind of stuff today. I mean, we can get... Bible in all kind of languages while we can even get it in Ebonics if we want to. We can have James Earl Jones quoting the Bible to us. If you can't feel God with James Earl Jones quoting the Bible to you, I mean, we got hillbilly versions of the Bible and we got Ebonic versions of the Bible. We got soul train versions of the Bible, whatever. But I'm telling you right now, I've never seen it like this and these two men of God can testify to this. We're about a mile wide and about an inch shallow with respect to the, we've gotten cute with the word. We've th thought, well, there's certain passages we don't need to preach anymore. No, that book changes you. You don't change what's in this book. If it's there, we have to preach it to you because your blood is going to be on our hands. So I begin to think about how many sermons and messages I've heard and preached down through the years. And then I begin to examine myself and I thought, with all the word that I've heard in my life, sure Surely to goodness I ought to be more fruitful than this. Because my Bible says this about God's word. My Bible said that God's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath God said and shall he not do it or has he not spoken and shall he not bring it to pass? And you know the Bible said in Isaiah 55 verse 7 and 8, he said my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways and your ways and my thoughts and your thoughts. As the rain comes down from heaven and snow and waters the earth and returneth not thither. He said, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It will accomplish that which I please and it'll prosper in the thing whereunto I have sent it. Friend, if he said it and you believe it, it ought to activate in your life. And my Bible said that word will be bread to the eater and seed to the sower. I'm telling you, we got any eaters in the house that's hungry for the uh, regurg oh I'm telling you right now I didn't come this morning to regurgitate some spiritual pablum I've come to give you a fresh word in due season and if you'll receive with meekness the engrafted word my Bible said it'll save your soul uh, how many of you know the word will work in your life uh, cause it's living it's powerful it's sharper than any two edged sword piercing dividing asunder of soul and spirit joint and marrow and it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart somebody said why you quote so much scripture I'll tell you why I like to knock devils out of minds I like to knock devils out of marriages I like to knock devils out of ministry I like to swing a sword cause in the invisible realm demons are scattering cause they can't handle the word somebody praise the Lord if you know the devil can't handle truth hallelujah my Bible said this in Ephesians 6. I mean, we, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And we put on all this armor. A lot of it's defensive. 
We got a shield of faith. We can quench the fiery darts of the wicked. We put on the helmet of salvation. But my Bible said take the sword of the spirit. It's a sharp two-edged sword. If it don't get you going, it'll get you coming. It's a sharp two-edged sword. And my Bible said praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. When you pray with other tongues, as the spirit gives you the utterance, you literally are putting on armor in the spiritual realm and when you take the word of God to the devil he can't handle the heat and he has to leave the kitchen can I tell you Isaiah 40 and verse 8 said the grass will wither and the flower will fade but the word of our God shall stand forever Matthew 24 verse 35 said this heaven and earth will pass hey heaven and earth will pass away but God's word will never pass away hey man they can try to do hey I'm telling you Hitler Stalin all of them tried to do away with the Bible and it's still here. As a matter of fact, the word of God is like the oak of God in the forest of eternity entwining its roots around the rock of ages. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Somebody praise the Lord if you know God's word. Hallelujah. will stand forever. How many you know that's what we need to eat? We need to feed on God's word so we can grow up into him in all things. How I many you know that word's alive? It's powerful. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15 said, From a child they know the holy scriptures. Why? That are able to make them wise unto salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture has been given by inspiration of God. And it's, uh, uh, it's good for doctrine, for reproof, and correction, and instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. I, see, I'm a literalist. I just take God at his word. If he said preach the word, amen. That's what he commands. Preach the word. Not my ideology, not my philosophy, not Reader's Digest, not what the latest uh, media is saying, but preach the infallible, indisputable, irrevocable word of the living God. Psalms 107 verse 20 said he hid his word. He sent his word and he'll heal our diseases. I don't have to call you forward for a prayer line to get you healed today. Hey, I'm the bird with the word. I've come to distribute a pill called the gospel and it'll put pep in your step unction in your function and life in your life oh that's the pill we need it's the gospel somebody praise the Lord if you know that pill works mm. somebody say what's wrong with Gary Keelan I'm hooked on a pill called the gospel I like to tell people you don't need no powders, pills or Prozac you don't need no Jack Daniels, Jim Bean. You just need J-E-S-U-S. Woo! Ha. I'm a hope dealer. We used to be dope dealers. Now we're hope dealers. I've come to deal some hope to you. Hey! Somebody, anybody, everybody, all the body, give him a radical, rambunctious, radical, raucous praise in this place. Oh, Woo. let God arise and let your enemies be scattered. Let them that hate the Lord flee before his presence. Glory to God. See, that's what's wrong. You said, Brother Gary, you got scripture to back up what you just said. Let me tell you something. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, 21, 22 says, My son and my daughter attend unto my words incline your ear to my sayings let them not depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart why because they're life to those that find them and health to all flesh that word health there is a Hebrew word marpe it literally means medicine remedy and cure in other words, I'm dispensing medicine this morning. And all you got to do, see, you can sit there and say, I got faith in a doctor. How many of you know he's the great physician? How many of you know he's got a prescription for what ails you? If an apple a day will keep a doctor away, just think what a scriptural day will keep a devil away. Somebody praise him. So he's given us a prescription 
okay, for every kind of ailment we might have, spiritual, mental, physical, social, and financial. So I can go down to the local pharmacy and have the greatest doctor in the world. Yeah. Amen. How many you know Jesus is a great physician? None <laughs> like him. Amen. And how many you know his word is a prescription? But just like in regular medicine, I can go down to the pharmacy, get a prescription field, and set that bottle on my nightstand. I can sit there and look at it and say, man, that's a good doctor I've got. He's the greatest doctor. None like him, none better than him. That pharmacist is awesome. <laughs> that, that medicine in there, I know it'll help me. But can I tell you, you can have all kind of faith in the world in the doctor, all kind of faith in the world in the medicine in the bo bottle, and you can have all kind of faith in the world that that medicine will help you. But let me tell you what real biblical faith is. That's when I take the top off of it, stick my hand down in there and get me a pill and chase it down with a drink of water. Then I've demonstrated my faith and that's where there's a disconnect in the body of Christ. We don't appropriate the word of God. We sit and we shake our heads and give mental assent that that was a good word, but my Bible said it won't activate till you do what the, what the preacher preaches. Hey, when we begin to operate and begin to do, be ye a doer of the word, not just a hearer only. See, and that's why we're not seeing as much fruit as we need to be seeing. We're not doing the word. See, when he, in, the, in the Great Commission, he said, teach them to observe all things I've commanded. It's a poor King James English translation of what that meant in the Greek. Teach them to do what I've commanded. Mental ascent is where I say, you know, you can get your head full of trivia about sports in the same way with the Bible. You can know all the stories in the Bible yet not know the God of the Bible. <laughs> when I preach, it should cause you to know him in a greater and greater measure. And then once you begin to know him, your faith will soar because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. And all of a sudden, you'll start taking the medicine. All of a sudden, your mind will be healed. Your marriage will be healed. Your ministry will be healed. Amen. Because that word is medicine. It'll medicate your mind. It'll medicate your mouth. It'll medicate your ministry. It'll medicate your marriage. It's medicine. Ah, you don't need no crack, no smack, no smoke, no coke, no blow, no snow, no Xanax, no Zoloft, no powders, pills, no potions. All you need is Jack Daniels and Jim Bean. Huey Lewis said he wanted to find a, he could, hey, you know the Huey Lewis, I'm going to date myself. He said, I want a new drug. One that won't make me sick. One that won't make me crash my car and make me feel three feet thick. Hey, Huey, I found it. It's the gospel. Somebody praise the Lord. And the reason Mick Jagger couldn't get any satisfaction, he never chopped his mouth into what the scriptures. Uh, oh, it'll put some pep in your step, unction in your function, and life in your life. You'll be L-U-I, living under the influence. Uh, hey, uh, somebody say, what's wrong with you? I've been popping a pill called the gospel, and I've never been better. Somebody praise the Lord. Let me hurry. Let me hurry a little bit. Because listen, God has a part in any service. Anytime we meet, God has a part in that. I don't have time to preach all this, but God will do three things. Let me know God always does his part. What will God do? God will give anointing. God will give authority. And God will give ability. And I could quote you scriptures to back me up on all three of those. My Bible says, if any man speak, let him speak as of an oracle of God. If any man minister, let him minister in the ability that God gives. We preach not ourselves, but we preach Christ in ourselves, your servants for Jesus' sake. Okay? And then the Bible says that we preach the gospel, not legalism and law. Okay? For the, the flesh is, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. But how many of you know we preach Christ and him crucified? For it is the power of God unto salvation. For if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not least the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ should shine unto them. Not that we're sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency comes from the Lord who makes us able ability, able ministers of the New Testament, not the letter, but of the Spirit. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. How many of you know John 6 verse 63? It is the Spirit 
spirit that makes me alive. Flesh profits you nothing, but the word I speak unto you, it is spirit and it is life. So God will give anointing, authority, and ability. Through your pastor, he will give him authority, anointing. We get confused about the anointing. The anointing is, comes from the anointed one. Who's that? A lot of people's minds, they fill in the blank with some big shot preacher they know on TV. Mm-mm. They didn't, they're not the source of the anointing. My Bible said Jesus, his name, there's many names, Messiah, which is the anointed one. All you got to do is get under the spout where the glory is being poured out and God will anoint you just the same as he has anointed me and anointed this pastor and this preacher right here. God will give you the same anointing because Jesus is a head and you're connected to the head. And if the head is anointed, all I got to do is connect myself to the head and it'll run down from the head down to the beard, down to the skirts of his garment. It'll cover the whole body. Mm. So God give anointing, God give it, I gotta hurry. God give anointing, authority, and ability. But how many know we got a part, we preachers? We have to do this. There's three incorrect ways to preach the gospel. And one good way. Now, can I tell you, Moses, the Bible said in Psalms, was he got angry and spoke unadvisedly with his lips. That's an example number one. He was angry and spoke. He had the wrong heart and he had the wrong message. There's a lot of that going on. Preaching for money is the wrong motive. I don't care how good your message is. Amen. Now, the flip side of that, there's balance to this intention. You ought to take care of the man of God. That's why we have pastor's appreciation. It's God giving you the opportunity to be blessed by taking care of the man of God. My Bible said, I quoted the earlier scripture, give honor to whom honor is due. Don't muzzle the ox that's treading out in the corn. How do you muzzle him? There's churches that, and I know this is not one of them, but I've been in those before. Daddy Warbucks on the back row tries to control the preacher. That's called the Jezebel spirit, by the way. Trying to control the a preacher. Trying to tell him what he ought to preach. Can I tell you, he's connected to the head. He is this earthly shepherd and his sheep hey, will follow the shepherd. Amen. And by the way, this is not a democracy. Church structure is not a democracy. We've allowed the failing democratic system of America to get drafted into church structure. This is not a democracy. It's a theocracy. There's one God who gives a man a God the vision for the church and the rest of us line up to the vision. Because if I've got an idea and he's got an idea, that's called division. Two different visions of what should happen. Die means more than one. Oh, Lord Jesus. Two separate visions. So if I want to appreciate him, not just on Pastor's Appreciation Sunday, I will get under the vision the Lord has given him. What about, what about voting? Voting is the highest form of division that you've ever seen. The minute I take a vote on anything, 50% are going to say one thing. You, you try it. You get enough people and take a vote, it'll be 50-50. All you did is measure how much divisiveness you got in the church. I'm telling you, we, I'm going to straighten this out before I go on to be with Jesus. If the Lord give me strength, all over, wherever I'm going, I'm preaching these types of messages. Because the church is dysfunctional right now. We've allowed worldliness to creep into the church. Well, Brother Gary, we ain't drinking and sleeping around. What are you talking about worldliness, honey? It's more subtle than what you think. He can't get you doing that. He'll slip in behind the back door and slip in some kind of structure that's not kingdom. Because people come to get a position, to get a vote. I don't come to get a vote in the church. I come to get equipped. This is a soul-saving station. You're an army. And and you ought to come to get equipped to fight a good fight of faith. 
A theocracy is way different than a democracy. In a democracy, we vote. A, a theocracy, we pray till we all hear the voice of God together. And then we march together into the enemy's camp. And we run the devil out of Rossville, Georgia. James chapter 3 verse 16 says this where envy and strife is there's confusion and every evil work every not 10% of the evil work not 50% we're doing pretty good only 10% of the devil's devices operating in our church we about got, no it says everything he's got is working in your church if you have envy and strife now, I didn't even talk to them, so anything I say that, that he's not responsible, I ain't even talked to him, been wanting to, hadn't talked to them at all. They, they'll tell you that. I mean, I bet you, you didn't know if I was going to show up or not. I mean, you sent me an email. I should have con confirmed, but I should have reconfirmed. I normally do that. So this is the Holy Ghost having me say this. I'm just trying to head off stuff. I believe in premeditated. I, I, I don't believe, you know, but God, we need to pray. Look at what's happened to us. Let's pray before it happens. Just keep it from happening. Somebody said, well, what, what do we do if we get in a hole? Stop digging, first of all. <laughs> Find yourself in a ditch, stop digging. But can I tell you, uh, we, we ought to keep you from getting in a ditch. <laughs> We're bad about praying when the docks are down. The devil's got us on our back. Well, hold up, we need to pray. No, we should have been praying a long time ago before they even showed up. Matter of fact, if we'd have been praying, he wouldn't have showed up to begin with. <laughs> Woo. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to help y'all. <laughs> Because I believe in what's going on. I believe in the vision this man's got. I believe in you. I believe in you. Amen. But I want to deposit something in you for down the road. Okay, if you'll apply this message today, it will absolutely preclude anything, any evil plan. I, I guarantee you the devil's got some evil plans that he wants to bring to pass. But I don't know about you. I want to be used by God. I don't want to be used by some principality. How many you know a principality has to have a personality to work through? He ain't going to come sashaying in that door with a red cape on and a pitchfork and two old horns with green guile coming out of his mouth. He'll work through somebody. Hey Amen. He'll, he'll work through that deaconette smoking a cigarette down at the dinette, driving a Corvette, listening to a sermonette. That's how he works. Doubting Don, the co-water committee. You know what I'm talking about. The God squad. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to help y'all because I want you to be everything God calls you to be. I mean, God can do something in, in here so spectacular. I'm telling you, he can launch a worldwide ministry. You can shake nations from this place because he's that kind of God. He's that big. He's large and in charge. You can't outlive him and you can't live without him. You might as well come on and join him. Let me hurry. I got to hurry. Sorry. Sorry. Mm. I preach the everlasting gospel. Okay. So, so uh, example number one, Moses. That's, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't preach the wrong message with the wrong heart. Okay. Number two, Apollos was eloquent. I mean, this man could shuck and jump. He could impress you. The man was intelligent. He could articulate truth. Amen. But how many of you know he had a good heart, too? The Bible bears this out. But old Apollos, amen, Priscilla and Aquila had to show him a more perfect way. Well, what was he doing? He had the good heart. He's, he had the right heart, but he had the wrong message. He was preaching the, uh, John's message after Jesus done died and rose again. Preaching with the right spirit but had the wrong message. And you know what? He was humble enough to allow them, Priscilla and Aquila, to expound unto him a more perfect way. Whew. So I can have the right heart. I can be sincere but be sincerely wrong. <laughs> then Paul said in Philippians chapter 1 verse 27, he said, Some are preaching Christ. How many of you know that's who we preach? 
It's not a what, it's a who. We preach who Christ is and what he did. That is the message. Because that message will produce a manifestation. That manifestation will produce maturity in me and you. And that maturity will release his majesty to a lost and dying world. That is the process whereby we grow and mature in Christ. Well, I'll give you three bad examples. See, they, they were preaching the right message, but they had the wrong heart because Paul said preaching Christ of envy, confusion. How many of you have ever seen somebody with an attitude preaching? What they were saying was true, but their attitude stunk. Come in wanting people to usher them in and usher them out. Loving the crowds, hating the people. I mean, nasty. Amen. Usually their marriages are nasty. You just don't know it. Ain't nobody going to help me. They had the right message but the wrong heart. How many of you know i got to have the right attitude of humility and submission? That's what the attitude we should have as preachers. Well, where's the good example, Brother Gary? Give us three bad examples. Oh, I'm glad you asked. I already quoted it to you. I wonder if you were listening. It said, preaching the truth, right message, with love, right attitude. <laughs> if I preach the truth in love and I articulate truth and I come with the right attitude, guess what? We've done our part. But here's where the disconnect is. God always does his part. I pray we preachers do our part. But you have a part this morning to play. Your part is you've got to accept what's being preached. You have to apply what's being preached. If you will accept it and receive it and then apply it, be doers of the word, not just to hear only, guess what's going to happen to you? If you'll accept it and apply it, God's got something called abundance waiting on you. And it's Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all you could even ask or think according to the power that is working in us. In other words, not 30, not 60, but a hundredfold increase. The parable says to those that would hear, believe, and receive. Don't just shake your head. Give mental assent to his messages and go out there and not do it. If you want the harvest, you have to do what's being preached. Mm. That was a good message, preacher, but listen. He, we like hearing that, okay, because we want to know that we're, we're being effective. But after that, what would help him more than anything is if you would apply what he preaches. That makes, oh, that makes a pastor's heart leap if he sees you doing the things he preached about. But can I tell you, in any service that you and I may have or any Sunday school lesson or whatever, amen, that parable tells us some stuff. There's, and I'm going to hit this real quick, and then we're going to try to get to the end of this. But number one, how many of you know the devil and those demons? They want to, the Bible said, the seed was sown, but immediately bird, birds are symbolic of Satan coming and plucking the seed out of you before it has time to even mature. Let me give you an example. P pastor might preach on marriage, and guess what? You'll go out in a car, and you'll get in an argument with your spouse over where to go eat after he preached a message on how to get along with your spouse. What happened? The devil stole that word from you before you had the time to even apply it. And every Sunday, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you, I don't know what it is. And, it, and this, if me and my wife are going, we, we, we can get along for two straight weeks. But the minute that I'm getting ready to preach, if we're going to disagree, it's going to be about, about I've literally, I'm, I'm, I'm authentic and I'm real. I have to get up every morning, put my pants on like the rest of you. Amen. And I'm not going to put on dress. You better say amen. That was a lob one out there, right there. That'll preach later, but forget it right now. Don't let your mind go over there right now. We'll address that later. We need to address it. <laughs> but I've actually, literally, I'm going to be just real and authentic. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not all that in a bag of chips. I haven't arrived yet. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I am in the drawer. I'm not a novice. I'm not an expert, but I'm not a novice either, okay? But <laughs> I've literally... <laughs> Me and my wife have had intense moments of fellowship before I'm supposed to preach. And I've been in another state and been on the phone with her. And I don't, you know, you got, if you're, 
you, some of you that don't preach don't really know what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm, I'm like, the devil tries to stop you before you even deliver the word that he's given you. He, he's that slick. And I've literally, I was in a service, in a, in a, it was a big church packed out. And, man, I, I, I was feeling the Holy Ghost was on me saying this to me. You need to go and apologize for what you said to your wife. I'm up on a platform just probably 10, 15 minutes away from preaching. Now, religion, well, I'm God's mighty man of faith and power. No, but you need to apologize to your wife, big shot. I mean, I don't know about you, but that's how the Holy Ghost talks to me. I leaned over to the pastor. I said, Pastor, I'll be right back. I promise you. I just need to go make a phone call. So I go out in a Sunday school classroom. I call my wife. I said, honey, I'm out here repenting. I said, God, forgive me, honey, forgive me. She said, I've already forgiven you. Just go preach the gospel. Amen. Hey, and she let me off the hook because she's a good wife. How many of you know he that finds a wife finds a good thing? She let me off the hook. But let me tell you something. The devil was slick. He tried to steal the word, amen, before I was able to even deliver it. I mean, you know, the Bible said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary is the devil is like a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Hey, Amen. We've got an adversary. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. What does he steal? God's seed out of your, your God's garden. And when the seed gets planted in you, he wants to take it out of you before it has time to bring forth fruit in your life. So how many messages have we heard that didn't benefit us one bit because we allowed the devil? That's why the Bible says neither give place to the devil. It's real easy. How do you give no place to the devil? Real simple. Give Jesus every place. Uh, what has no place in you has no power over you. He has no place. As a matter of fact, the Satan came to Jesus and my Bible said he could find nothing in him. Uh, he couldn't find any way to get inside uh, and do any damage. Uh, oh, somebody praise the Lord if you know you're going to fight the good fight of faith. Let me hurry. Number two, persecution arose for the word's sake. Now you're going to go through testing. You're going to th go through trial, tribulation, and temptation. Nobody is exempt from that. While we're here, you're going to be tested. You're going to be tried. You're going to be tempted. But the key is, what are you going to do when you get in that? Amen. How many of you know when you're right in the middle of a storm and you think Jesus is asleep like the disciples did, crossing over the Sea of Galilee, Jesus, they said, wake him up. He, he got up and said, you could have calmed the winds and the waves just like me. It woke him up and he calmed the winds and the waves. But how many of you know the valleys? He was singing it there earlier. How many of you know you go through valleys? How many of you know you go through hardship? Headaches, heartbreak, and hang-ups, and all this stuff coming your way. Amen. But how many of you know Jesus said, be of good cheer? Jesus' uh, greeting a lot of times was, be of good cheer. Why? I've overcome the world. In this world, Jesus said, you have tribulation but be of good cheer for I've overcome the world just cheer up turn to the person on the left say just cheer up turn to the person on the right say be of good cheer you ought to be a cheerleader cause Jesus was a cheerleader cause my Bible said he said be of good cheer why I've, I've overcome the world be of good cheer for your sins are forgiven be of good cheer it is I be not afraid if God's here you don't have to be afraid at all somebody praise the Lord if you know God's on your side. God is for you. Jesus is with you. Holy Ghost is in you. And angels are encamped around about them to fear the Lord. Be of good cheer because he's overcome. And because he's an overcomer, he'll make you more than a conqueror. Somebody praise the Lord if you know you're more than a conqueror. Let me hurry. So, got an adversary, got adversity. And we've got apathy. The Bible said, is the other thing. Apathy can set in if you're not careful. Worry, wealth, and worldliness. The Bible says, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust for other things, amen, entered in and choked out the word before it had time to blossom in our lives. How many of you know worry is like a war rocking chair? You'll do a lot of moving, but you won't go nowhere. Did you know the Bible tells us not to worry? 
Philippians 4 and verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always. Oh, Lord, I'm, I, can't, I sing like a jailbird behind a few bars, can't find the key. I can't believe I had the audacity to try to sing in front of him. <laughs> Couldn't hold a note that had a handle on me. <laughs> but I love that song, nevertheless, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be made known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. The Bible says be careful for nothing. That means don't worry about anything is what it means. Don't be full of cares. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And then the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your heart and your minds through Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren and sistern, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Don't let the devil put stuff in your mind. Your mind's not a trash pit for the devil to come dumping stuff and refuse in your mind. The mind of Christ is a terrible thing to waste. <laughs> I'm dating myself now. There used to be a, you know, don't do drugs. All these campaigns you see down through the decades. But the, when I was growing up as a teenager, they had, they, had a, they had a commercial, and it was a skillet that was red hot, and they cracked an egg. And it, at the end of that commercial, it'd say, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. As if my mind was that egg getting cracked. <laughs> And, and I begin to think about that. How many of you know we have the mind of Christ? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? For we have the mind of Christ. If we have it, you need to receive it. Because Philippians 2 and verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Don't let worry Lust for other things. Amen. Worry, wealth, and worldliness enter in and choke out the word. Man. That's number three. We're almost there. Number four, here's one. Atmosphere. Let me, let me show you an example. If I take, I love mangoes. I'll take a lot of mission trips to countries that have mangoes. We think we got mangoes here. I'm telling you. They've got trees 50 feet tall. Down in Florida, their mango trees, eh, might be, you know, they might be 10 feet tall or whatever. But you get down in Brazil, Hundred-year-old mango trees. I mean, they climb up in the top mangoes. I'm telling you, huge. I mean, the best taste. Because when we get them here and they get exported in, they're green and they ripen on the way, and that's why they don't taste too good. But you get one down in the Amazon rainforest like I've had that big, I'm telling you, I love mangoes. <laughs> and there's a song, by the way, and I'm, I'm going to tell you where to go find it. And it's me singing, oh, I do love mangoes, mangoes. Oh, I forget it. It's actually on YouTube. <laughs> Hunter loves this. He, he's loving this. <laughs> Woo. But let me tell you, you can take a mango and go out to Iowa and put that seed in the ground, and you will not get any mangoes to grow. Now, Iowa is a corn, part of the corn belt, Iowa. Kansas, Nebraska, all that's a corn belt. That dirt out there, if you've ever been out there, is rich beyond belief. It's black. I mean, it's the finest dirt on the earth. That's why they call it the corn belt or the bread basket of America. We can grow soybeans. We can grow corn. We can grow rye. I'm telling you, any kind of staple to make bread that you could imagine can grow. Corn is like 20 feet tall. The blade, the ear, and the full corn in there. You get all that. Okay? So it's not the dirt is not good dirt. And it's not that it don't get hot in Iowa because you go out there in the summertime in Iowa, it is scalding hot. Here's the deal. It's not that the dirt's not good. It's not that the seed's not good. It's not that it don't get hot. Here's the problem. It just don't stay hot. Oh, 
A lot of churches get hot for a hot revival. They get a special preacher come in. They get hot and then they cool off. Nowhere in the Bible does it ever tell us we have to tone it down, let up, shut up till we get powered up, primed up, bepped up. You can live a lifestyle of revival. Revival is not just some special speaker coming in for a three night and preaching a bunch of red hots, blowing in, blowing up, and blowing out. A revival is a lifestyle where we facilitate, build yourself a hot house. When you pray and fast, you build a hot house up here in this church. And when that man preaches or that man preaches, the seed will fall on you. And the hotness, the atmosphere is supercharged and it'll germinate the seed in your life. And you'll bring forth fruit, not 60, hey, but a hundredfold increase to those that would hear it and believe it. You got to keep that atmosphere hot. Because a lot of people preach a good word, but it's just not hot. They don't have any, uh, no germination of the seed. It's just not hot enough, long enough. Let me show you something. Mount Transfiguration. Peter, James, John up there with Jesus. Here's Moses and Elijah, representing the law and the prophets. Peter, speaking out of turn again, poor old Peter. Always opening that mouth and sticking the foot in it. He said, let's build three temples here. And Moses and Elijah appeared and disappeared in Christ. How many of you know Jesus is the epitome? He is at the law and the prophets all rolled into one because the whole book's about Jesus. Jesus, when he said, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, he was talking about Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. You just thought Jesus was in the gospels. He's all the way from Genesis clean through the maps. It's amazing how we butcher the Bible. We can go into a book of the Bible and pull out everything but him. No wonder we're dying. We go into the book of Revelation and get corn fused. We see spiders as big as Volkswagens. We see the Antichrist, the mark of the beast, six plus six. Oh, Lord Jesus, come on back, Jesus. We extract everything out of the book of Revelation. Beside, can I tell you the Bible is really easy to understand? Where do you hide a key when you got, travel off somewhere and you want somebody to watch your house? You hu- usually hide it at the front, somewhere around the door. <laughs> Because if you're going to get in a door, you got to have a key. Every book in the Bible has a key verse that unlocks the whole book. And people, right when they read it, right at the front, miss it. Can I tell you the first five words in the book of Revelation tell you what the whole book's about. So don't get corn fused by the book of Revelation. First five words, you pick your Bible up and read it real close. It says, the revelation of Jesus Christ. So if I go in that book and I pull out everything but Christ, I miss the whole point of the book. It amazes me. People get up and teach a series on Revelation. Not once point people to Jesus. You got your dates and your charts and your wow and you're filling up conferences and not once does the name of Jesus ever get mentioned when the whole book's about him. So if I go in that book, oh, see the church is looking for an event. I'm look, not looking for an event. I'm looking for a person. The end is not an event. The end is a person. Why? Jesus said, I'm Alpha. I am Omega. I am the beginning. I am the end. He which was, which is, and which is to come. The Almighty. That's why he said, fear not. I'd be afraid too if if I was looking for an event. But I'm looking for a person, not an event. Are you pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib? I'm pan-trib. It'll all pan out in the end. He's coming back. Case closed. If he toots, are you ready to scoot? That's the question. Give him a shout of praise. Now let me close right here. I said let me close. Didn't promise you I would. I just said let me close. I'm praying, Lord, let me close. Let me get a drink of water. How about that? So, we got three things. We got the four things there. We got an adversary, apathy, adversity, atmosphere. So, I'm going to 
finish with this. What kind of ground are you? See, most people preach that passage, they go to the ground and preach it. And there's four types of soil mentioned there. Wayside. You know what that means? you got to get a picture of, of what he was saying there. Their gardens didn't look like our gardens. What they would do is they would go out in a field and get all the rocks and stack them up and make a, a, a barrier around their garden by getting the rocks literally out of the garden and stack them up. When, that, when the Bible says God will put a hedge, my mind would go to a bush. And I thought, man, a bush ain't going to keep a devil out. <laughs> Put a hedge of protection. My mind would always go to that. And, I, and one day I found out that's not what that was. A hedge was a stone wall. Now I can keep you out with, if I build a stone wall. But a hedge, you could just, you know, pretty much just run through that hedge and come get me, okay? So they would take the rocks out. And then they would walk down and, and, and just throw the seed everywhere. I mean, you know... I can remember as a kid going down and sowing stuff, and, and Dad, you know, he's real, ooh, he had to do it a certain way, man. You're wasting seed. It, it goes right here, son, you're not where you're stepping. But that, that, that ain't how they did it. I mean, they just went through and just, <laughs> seed went everywhere. And they would make these rows and walk down them. So when it says the wayside, it means the pathway they walked. How many of you have been walked on before in life? Maybe a spouse walked on you and you divorced and had trouble. Maybe a friend walked on you. Maybe they put you on the black list. Maybe they put you on the B list. I got news for you. As long as you're on God's mailing list, you're on the devil's hit list, you're going to make it. Somebody say amen. So has your life been like that where somebody is just... You felt like just stepped on you, talked about you, mistreated you. Amen. I've never had this happen yet, and I'm praying it does happen. I'm praying that somebody will come in the altar and go, Ah, praise God, glory to God. And have me ask them, Man, what, what's, what happened to you? Did you get a million dollars in the bank? No, they talked about me. Can I tell you, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 said, Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. My Bible said rejoice and be exceedingly glad. What does exceedingly glad look like? Ah, glory to God. That's what exceedingly glad looks like. But, Pastor, Justin, I've yet to have anybody come up and do that yet. I'm waiting on it. And I've never had them do this one either. James chapter 1, I quote all of James for you if you needed me to. But James chapter 1 said, count it all joy. When? When you fall into divers' temptations. What? Brother Gary, I'm being tempted to look at porn. <laughs> count it all joy. When you fall into various temptations, various means anything out there. I've yet to have that happen. Why you joy? Why you got so much joy? I'm being tested, tried, and tempted. Glory to God. I have yet to have anybody do that. I'm still waiting. Waiting for it. A lot of people are waiting on a lot of things. I'm waiting on those two things. Somebody to shout because somebody's persecuting, saying all manner of evil, and somebody rejoicing because I count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations, knowing that th these temptations will work patience in you, but let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. For a double-minded man's unstable in all of his ways. Glory to God. That's how you know you've been in revival when somebody gets up in here. Glory, Pastor Justin, I'm being tested. Glory. They're talking about me, Pastor. Glory to God, we're in revival. 
Stop worrying about what people think about you. The fear of man brings a snare. As a matter of fact, you ought to obey God rather than man. We worry too much about what people think. We need to worry about what God says. Let me hurry. So you had that, and then you had that old stony ground. Hard-hearted. Anybody ever had that? Thank God for Ezekiel because God says when you get born again, he'll take your stony heart and give you a heart of flesh. He'll take that other spirit in you, replace it with his Holy Spirit. See, out in California, you can pay 45 bucks a pop and some medium will channel a spirit into you. Can I tell you, I'd rather hang out with a spook I got in me than one they got. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. He scares the devil out of people and rattles chains of bondage. Boo, that's what you need to say to Satan. Amen. Don't be afraid of Hallow's Wayne. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. How many know the greater one lives on the inside of you? Mm. Besides that, I put on Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you are wonder women. You don't even realize it. See, when you step in your prayer closet, you're a woman. But when you come out praying the Holy Ghost, you become a wonder woman because he'll put some super in your natural. <laughs> Somebody asks what you're going to dress up like for, for October. Tell them wonder woman. Uh, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Let me talk to you men a little while. You men might be Clark Kent's. Mild-mannered man talking to mild-mannered people on how to be more mild-mannered. You know, that's what Clark Kent was. He a little preppy guy running around. Lois Lane didn't know who to be more in love with. Uh, Clark Kent or Superman. What she didn't know was they were one and the same. <laughs> oh, oh, Clark Kent said, honey, excuse me, please, pardon me, please. Lex Luthor's on the other side of town turning over trains uh, and crashing planes. Uh, but I'm going to slip into my prayer closet. I might go in there, Clark Kent, but I'm coming out Superman. Uh, and you know, when you go in your prayer closet. God will put some super in your natural. Oh, hey. I mean, you know, we got some super men and some wonder women in this place today. So hard heartedness. Then the other one. Thorny, thorny ground. I could ask a question. How's your garden grow this morning? Hey, Amen. You have you been trampled on? Are we hard-hearted? Do we have thony? Thorn, thorny. Thorny. My mall. You know, Elmer Fudd. I'm not speaking in tongues. I'm just tripped over my words. Elmer, Elmer Fudd. So some people have thorny ground. But I believe this morning that you're good ground. And God's word is the seed. And you've got seed this morning. And I believe I've sown it with the right attitude. I've come with an attitude of humility and submission. I'm submitted to the authority here. And as pastors appreciate it Sunday. But the greatest way that you could ever appreciate your pastor is to take what's being preached. See, if you understand that parable, you understand all parables. Then if you understand that parable, you understand how the kingdom of God operates and not just on pastor's appreciation, but all through the year, think about this. As he preaches, if you will receive it and do it and mix it with faith, you and your families will be blessed in highly favor of the Lord. Not 30, not 60, but a hundredfold increase to those that would hear, believe, and receive. Stand on your feet, please. Amen. Give God a shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Now, I want to I wanna pray for the pastor and his wife up here this morning. What can I do for the pastor? Don't muzzle the ox that treads out the corn. You know, obviously, financially supporting and sowing into the ministry here is, is not only appropriate, it's, it's, we're, we're told to do that by, by, by God. Amen. And then the other part of that that we can do is pray, pray, pray. 
exercise yourself unto godliness. Because when you pray, amen, pray for your pastor. Lift him up in prayer. Lift her up in prayer. Amen. Because just like I said, he's married to the church. And the job of the pastor is to guard the flock. The teacher grounds. Pastor and teacher guarding and grounding the flock. Amen. So the first thing I want to do is pray for the pastor and his wife this morning. Sister, Sister Morgan, come on up and work. Brother Justin, is he playing something? Huh? Oh, bathroom. So I want you to, to come up here and let's pray for the, the the ministry here. Pray for the pastor and his wife, and then and then we're gonna pray for you, Father. I pray the richest blessings on them today. Lord, you've called them. Many are called, but few are chosen. Chosen vessels of God sanctified meat for the master's use God grant to them the authority the ability pour out your ability upon them give them wisdom beyond their years give them wisdom beyond measurement of man give them wisdom Lord discernment discerning of spirits sister God's going to deposit within you discerning of spirits not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the living God receive wisdom. Wisdom from above is first pure, peaceable, easy to be and treated without hypocrisy and full of good fruits. But the wisdom from beneath is carnal, sensual, and devilish. Stir up the gifts that are within you by the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. God, I've come to this place to bless the pastor and his wife today. I lay my hands on them in an apostolic sort of way. Flee, follow, and fight. If I had anything to say to you, I would say the same thing I, that the Apostle Paul said to Timothy. Hey, Timothy, flee, follow, and fight the good fight of faith. God, I pray for a fight and a tenacity and a steadfastness and a strength to come upon this vessel. An heir and a joint heir with Jesus is what we are, Lord. Oh, you called them the two will be one flesh. You put them together, one will put a thousand to flight, but two will put ten thousand to flight. There's a multiplication effect upon you, sister, in Jesus' name. Oh, what about Koya Laba Sanda Laba Kalaba Sanda Laba Kaya? Yeah, Laba Kasunda Laba Kaya 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 Laba now let's pray for the pastor father in, in Jesus name I pray as he stands and preaches the word, being instant in season, out of season, reproving, rebuking, and exhorting with all long suffering and doctrine. Lord, we command in the name that is above every name that the anointing of the Holy Ghost set upon him in a greater measure, Lord. Your presence, your power, governing, guarding, grounding, guiding, and gathering the flock of God. Oh, as he leads them beside still waters, their souls are going to be restored. My sheep know my voice, and another they will not follow. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons and daughters of Almighty God. Oh, God, I pray, Koshete and Abakaya. I pray you'll deposit wisdom beyond his years. Lord, that you'll deposit the gift of faith to believe for the miraculous signs, wonders, and miracles operating through the ministry. Out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth will speak. Enlarge his mouth above his enemies. Give him a big mouth, God, to preach a big God and a big gospel. God, you're large and you're supercharged in the name of Jesus. God, quicken 
his body. God is anointing him with fresh oil. The anointing that removes a burden and destroys a yoke is upon you, brother. Teach his hands to war. A bow of steel will be broken by his arms. Give the faith. Give the faith to believe for the supernatural. Things that cannot be seen. You're going to believe for the impossible. You're going to believe. You're going to have a, a deposit of faith like you've never had before. He gives to every man a measure of faith. But there's a deposit beyond all oh, that, that initial deposit of faith in you. Come on, pull you behind you. You're my battle axe and my weapon of war, says the Lord. I'm going to use you to break the pieces of nations. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in condemnation, you'll condemn for this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Oh, Jesus, make his feet like...